Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, then please press the like button and subscribe. So in this video, I'm gonna be building an app like Seated, which is gonna allow restaurants to accept reservations for their tables throughout the week. So a restaurant could have a certain amount of tables that they allow at once, and then customers can book a reservation. And then once that time slot is filled, they'll just have to choose a later reservation. This is gonna be a really cool video and I actually got it recommended by a comment. I'll show it right here. So this just shows that if you guys leave a comment on this video, I might build that for the next video because I'm looking for new suggestions. Comment down below what you want me to build next, but let's get right into this. Okay, let's open the terminal and now I'm gonna create the new Rails project. And now it's seated. Okay, I'm just gonna call it seated rails. And then I'm gonna pass in the database as PostgreSQL. And I'm going to use Tailwind for the CSS framework. All right, now that that's completed, we can CD into the application and I'm going to start it up. Now I'll be able to view it on localhost 3000. And let's create the database. And now we see everything's working. We see the Rails logo, which means everything's set up and we're ready to start building this app. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just start off with a simple home page. So I'm gonna do a generator for controller, and then I'm gonna do a pages controller home action. Now we can just start the server again, but I'm gonna open up the code in Visual Studio Code. Now that I have the code open in Visual Studio, I'm going to go and change the root of the application so we can open the config folder and the routes.rb. Now you'll see this is what was added by the generator. I'm just going to delete this and then go down here to this comment where we're setting the root and I'm going to change it to the pages home action. Now if we refresh, we'll see that we have this and everything's working correctly. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of styling on that home page. I'm just going to change this to the name of our app. I'm just calling it seated for now because I can't think of a creative name. Last time I for Uber, I did it Ruber because Ruby Uber, but I can't think of one for seated. I couldn't really change the R. That's okay. So inside of here, just do a little description. Simple reservations restaurants and what else? <clears throat> okay. mm, I'm gonna center that mm, okay. it's not really doing what I'm wanting but I'm just gonna change this a little bit and then go layout I'm gonna move this main tag okay now I'm gonna come back in here there we have some simple styling it's nothing crazy but we're just setting up the simple home page and maybe I'll even finish it off with a cool gradient So I'm going from indigo to blue, but I need to make it take up the min height, 100 view height. Just in case we make it bigger, then it can scale past that. Now we have seated. I might even make this look a little bit prettier. Just make it lighter. This is definitely not required. Just kind of want to do some styling for the video. It might actually be cool to do like purple. But yeah, I don't want to get too carried away, anyways. <clears throat> so then I'm going to have the two links. That's probably how I'm going to just do it because I'm keeping it really simple for now. But it would be sign in as customer.
and then sign as his owner. There's two different links for now. So real quickly, I want to go over the architecture and the different models that I'm going to set up for this app. So first of all, we're going to have the owner model, which is going to allow the owner to sign up and then they can view and manage the different restaurants. Now that leads us to the restaurant model, which is going to be where they can add in the information about the restaurant, such as the name, maybe the location, and then also the table limit. So the amount of tables that they can have booked during one meal. So we might also want to think what the reservation time slots would look like, but I'll probably start off with just one hour or maybe half an hour reservations because half an hour is probably good for a meal. Now that leads us to the last model, which is the customer model. And a customer is going to be able to create an account and then view their, the different uh, restaurants they can go to and then also book a reservation and have that show up on their side. So I'm really excited about this app. I think it's a great idea. Shout out to the commenter who suggested this idea. Yeah, now let's get into the code part, the fun part. All right, now that we have a simple homepage set up, we have two different links. I'm gonna implement these models and I'm gonna add the device gem so we can have that to, to make the sign-in process easier for these two models. So I'm gonna go to the console and then we can bundle add device. And then do a Rails G device colon install command. And now from here, I'm also just gonna add in the flash alerts for sign in. So I'm gonna create a partial on in the views and the layouts folder. I'm gonna call it alerts, and then I'm gonna render it inside of the layouts folder. Just like this. Start the server although i'm going to generate those models so for that we do rails g devise and then the name of the model which i'm going to do customer and also do owner two models for each and then i'm going to migrate to database now we can go back to that home page and we can actually change these links to new customer session path and new owner session path. So you can either sign in or sign up as either of these. Now I do want to customize the login page a little bit, so I'm gonna to have to extend, um, or I'm gonna to have to generate the device views and override them. Right. Where else cheat device views? I'm gonna go and change the styling in there a little bit. I'm just gonna add a little bit of styling to the sign-in page. So one thing we can do that'll clean it up a lot is to center this form. So that we can just do MX Auto, give this a max width, and then that'll already center it. We can also add some margin top. And let's see what that looks like. So it is centered, but I want I guess I want it to be a little bit smaller than that. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a slight background. Okay. Now what I wanna do is also try to center this, the inner content. So I'm gonna use flex. I'm gonna do flex call item center. Now this is a little bit centered. You know what, this is already kind of fine for right now. You know, we can always do more styling tweaks but for right now it's fine. And then I'm, I'm gonna copy it over. So really all we have to copy is this div. And then I'm gonna copy it to the registrations new, which is the sign up page. So wrap this. And then we already have a centered sign in page, which at least that's a little better. And then let's go and add this up here too, like we had over there. So the resource name, capitalize it. And now we'll see it's a customer sign up. That's pretty neat. We can either sign in as an owner, sign in as a customer. 
Now, when we sign in as a customer and an owner, we're actually going to see two different things, right? When we go into customer, we're going to end up at the reservation side where you're viewing all of the available restaurants. You're clicking one and then you're booking a reservation. But the owner, you're going to be viewing all of your current restaurants. All right, so let's start off with the owner side. So let's sign in, or actually let's register as an owner. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna scaffold that model. And I'm just gonna call it location. And now location is gonna have a name. It's also gonna have an address and then it's also gonna have tables or table limit, which will be type integer. And now let's migrate that. And now we can go in the URLs to locations. Oh, I have to restart the server. So see if we can go, and then we see that we have these locations. I can create a new location. Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to do that. So we can call it you know, restaurant one. This could be any location. And then the table limit could be 10. So there's 10 tables at once. And that's how many reservations you could book for the current slot. Now, to make this be the root page, when we go back to the route of the application, because we don't want to see this anymore now that we're signed in, we can go into the code, go to the routes.rb. So that was over in config folder, routes to RB. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna change the root. So right here, this is the root for all the users. But we wanna change it so that when an owner signed in, they get a different root. So to do that, we can add this code here. So when the authentic, when the user, when the owner's authenticated, it's gonna to root to the locations index. Simply, and now if we refresh, we'll see we get redirected to locations. That's perfect. We can manage the locations. And now when we're thinking about the other type of user, I'm actually going to go in incognito and then go to localhost and sign up as a customer. Oh, whoops. It didn't go through. All right. I signed up as a customer now. And now I want to think about where the customer is going to get routed to. So I actually just need to create a new page that the customer will see. And I'm thinking of calling it the booking page. So to do that, I'm just going to do the controller by hand. So we can go into controllers, create a new file. I'm going to call it the booking controller. Or I need to create the class and it's going to inherit from the application controller. And then the booking controller will have just a show action. Because you'll see how I'm going to connect this when I go to the routes. And I'm going to do a resource. And that means that they're just, it's never going to be plural amounts of this. It's just a singular controller action. So resource booking, we're going to limit it to only the show action. And also, I have to set the controller name because... It would usually look for a plural controller, but I'm just using a singular name, which, yeah, this is just how I like to do it. But we're gonna do it like that. That's gonna set up the route for here. And then we can just create the, the view. So we go over here to views folder, we create a booking folder, and then a show. Now inside of here is where we'd show on the booking page. But to link this so the customer sees that, so. Here, I'll put a message. Book new reservation. But to make it so that when the customer is signed in, that's the root of the application, we need to go to the routes. And we could just copy this and edit it for the customer. So when the customer is authenticated, then instead of the locations index, it's going to go to the booking show. And then we also have to edit the name of it. So this as part, we have to change that to customer. And just like that, it'll set it up. 
So now we see we have this page, book new reservation. Uh, I'm actually gonna title this, probably like browse restaurant options, locations. So you can see the available locations and then you can choose what you want. Now to view all those locations, we can just loop over them, but we're gonna need to set the, we're gonna need to set that instance variable in the controller. But we could just say that we're gonna loop over and then we're gonna render a location partial. And then that would go over to this location, html.erb. <coughs> But we have to go back into the booking controller in the show action because we need to set that instance variable so that we can have it on the page. And add locations would equal just location dot all really because there's n we're not really scoping it right now. And then each location we might just have a little border around it. I'll just do a background color, and then we'll have. The location name, the location address, and then the location table limit. I'm just going to wrap these up in P's. It's a little bit of styling. <clears throat> Whoops, I forgot to put dot each to iterate over them. Okay, and it looks like there's a little bit of styling issue. Oh, because I tried to close this off with a div. Okay. Oops. I think I'm just gonna put a container up here. We can do PX8 and then we can also put some gap in between these. Actually, we might want to think about how they're going to be arranged. Because if we're thinking about a full screen, they might um, view it in like a grid layout. Now this is fine, although on mobile it's going to be a bit squished. So I'm going to actually make this responsive like that. And then at the bottom we should put a link to book the reservation. Book the reservation. And this is going to go to a page that we're going to have to define. just to collect a little bit of more information. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create that reservation page, which would show all of the available time slots that are available to be reserved. So let's create that. We're gonna need another controller and I'm actually gonna nest it inside of the locations. So I'm gonna create a new controller called locations and I'm gonna create an, the reservations controller. Then we're gonna have a module locations class reservations. Here it's from the application controller. And then this is gonna have a new action. Like set reservation equals location dot reservations dot new. And then we'll have a before action set location. 
and we'll put that inside of private and underneath here we'll, we'll say set location I'm just gonna get the location and it's gonna set it by the location ID now the way that we're gonna set this up so that the route works and that we have that location ID is we're gonna go and change the routes and then so right here we have resources locations we can add a block and then also I'm gonna do a scope module locations and then inside of here I'll do resources reservations and we're actually gonna have a new but we'll also end up having create action which is when we confirm it and we save it in the back end so over here if we go back to that reservations you see we have the new but then eventually we're gonna add the logic for the create which is gonna save the reservation and confirm it so we might double check if it's still available too right here and now for that reservation page so we'll actually go into the locations folder and then we'll create another folder called reservations and inside here we'll add a new page and then I'm just gonna do a title for now I'm just gonna say book a reservation at the location name and then we're gonna have to display those available time slots okay so I've been thinking about how I'm gonna design this and I actually realized we might need a few more fields on the location model because we're gonna have to think about the times for each day like f from which times are they available you know what I mean the, so like the opening time of the restaurant and the closing time okay so I'm gonna go to the console and I'm gonna do rails view migration add time fields to locations now the time fields are really going to be two separate columns which is going to be the opening time it's not date time it's actually just time I think we can do time and then closing time all right now I'm gonna take a peep at this migration adding it okay it looks fine it's time let's migrate this and start the server and actually we're gonna have to edit the form to add those fields for the time so I'm gonna go in here I'm gonna go to locations and then it's the underscore form partial and I'm just gonna copy one of these and I'm actually gonna add well, we're gonna have to change these to starting time. Oh, wait, no, I called it opening time. So we should be able to do a time field, and I don't think this styling is gonna really apply anymore. But let's see. I mean, okay. Okay, fine. Uh, that's fine. So the time we might want to have a default I'm gonna do a default okay okay that's fine we have a opening time and I'm just gonna copy this and do closing time. Now we're also gonna have to update the controller, locations controller to permit these new attributes. So if you go down here to location permit params, see that we need to add those to so the opening time and then the closing time. Now we have two fields and we can actually save these. So let's say the opening time is 7 a.m. Closing time is 9 p.m update it uh, maybe we can also show it on this page real quick so that's the location underscore location and print 
this out. Say opens that. Ooh. <laughs> okay, how do we convert this into time? We're gonna have to use surf time. to get just our minute stir time hour right and then also am pm let's see if that worked Opens at 7 a.m. Closes. Closing time. 9 p.m. There we go. We can display it. And then we might as well shift display it on the other one over here. So on the reservations page. Actually, where's that? That's the booking page. Opens at, closes at. I'll change that so it's correct. Let's see, it opens at 7 a.m., closes at 9 p.m. And then they have the option to book a reservation. So, what's going to happen when they click book reservation? It's going to go to that reservation page, which now everything should be in place so we can change the URL and set that up. So it would be new. Location, reservation path. And then we'd have to pass in that location. Yep, that was correct. And then we clicked on it. And now it looks like there's no model of reservation yet. So actually, in the beginning, I talked about architecture and I forgot about the model reservation. But we are going to need to go and generate that. So I'm going to go into console, do RailsG model reservation. Now reservation is going to belong to a location and it's also going to belong to a customer. And then we're also going to add the reservation date attribute. And this is going to be type date time, which is different from the time attribute we used before because this one is going to care about the day, the month, and the year because reservations could be booked in for weeks in advance. So we're gonna have to store that too. Let's generate the model and then let's migrate the database. And then restart the server. Everything should be good. Except for the location model, we need to go and update that real quick. So we can add this association, has many reservations. And then while we're doing that, we can also add that to customer. Say so it has many reservations. And then if you want to look at the reservation model, it also already has this set. It belongs to location, belongs to customer. Now, if we refresh, we see everything fine. Although we see undefined, whoops. I think I had a typo in this controller. Reservation. So is it on the new page? open up the reservations new oh I tried to use uh, the variable but I need to add an at sign because the instance variable so now we see this title book reservation at the restaurant now we can also make this center like the rest of the site add a little bit of padding So we got this far, we've already created all the models, we've created the scaffolds and the different form pages, and now we're at the point where we're gonna book the reservation. And now I'm left with the challenge of how I'm gonna present this UI and this feature. Now I know you guys at home, you want me to build out the whole calendar where you can look months in advance and then we render all the reservations and you can view them in a nice pretty UI. 
But here's the thing, that's gonna take me a lot of coding to do that, like a few hours of coding just to build all that pretty UI. And if you wanna see that, I will do that, but we're gonna do a part two where we do an advanced calendar for booking reservations. But what I'm gonna do for this video is I'm gonna just add a form where you can enter in a time and then we're gonna post that server. We're gonna check in the back end. We're gonna validate, is that time already booked? Is there, you know, does it fit in based on the table size? So I'm still gonna complete the logic. I'm just not gonna build the whole calendar because that's gonna take a lot of time. And it's also gonna extend this video a lot. Okay, so trust me for this. If you wanna see the advanced calendar functionality, I can do it in a new video. Just comment down below. So let's add that form where you can select the time of your reservation. And then we're gonna validate in the back end. So we're gonna do form with URL would be, it's actually gonna be location reservations path. And then we're gonna pass in the location. Now the reason being because we're, we're trying to get to that create action in this reservation controller right here. And then inside of here, we're gonna do f.label and we're gonna call this reservation date. And then we're gonna do a date field. Actually, I want a date. I need a date and time. I'm not sure if. Now that we have the reservation date field, we're just going to, whenever somebody books a reservation, we're gonna go and check in the back end and make sure that's valid. And there's a few cases that we wanna check for, like is it within uh, the time that it's open at? And then also, is there other reservations that would you know, make it unavailable? So, the last thing I'm gonna do is add the submit button. Dot submit. And then we'll say check reservation. So the person would choose a date and then they would choose a time, click check reservation. This would post to the server and here's where we would be able to tell them if it's okay or not. So let's start off by checking if the reservation is in the correct time. So actually let's bring this over and then let's create it new with the reservation params. Which would be another method that we can add. So we can require reservation and then permit the reservation date. And actually for this to work with the require, we need to go back and edit that form because right now we're setting the URL but we also need to set the model to location and then it will set that in the param too. So now we're gonna have a reservation object, which is gonna have that reservation date. And we can just go and check if reservation, if the date is inside of the times. So we're gonna have to do this real quick. So if it's greater than location dot opening time, kind of something like this, if it's greater than this and it's less than the closing time, but we might just want to make a, a clean method. Definitely want to make a clean method. So let's do it off the location. If location dot within operating hours. I like that method. Okay, simply like that, we pass in the reservation, reservation date. Now, if it is, 
then we would do this. Otherwise, we can just render new. We should be able to add an alert and say the reservation is outside. So let's test this out real quick. So it opens at 7 a.m. Let's try to do a reservation at 4 in the morning because it closes at 4 at 9 p.m. too. So let's check. I wasn't really able to see what happened. Oh. Interesting. Okay. It's actually trying to make a post request now because I set the model. All right, to simplify this, I'm just gonna remove the model option and then let's not use reservation params. Let's just simply set it by hand by accessing the Params reservation date. And now I'm going to test this. So it's before. And then we get this if undefined method within operating hours. Because we haven't defined that yet. Let's go to location model. And we're going to create a new method. And then this is going to accept a date. Really, it's going to accept a reservation date. And then we can check, is it within hours? So if it's greater than the opening time, I think what we're gonna have to do is, we're going to have to take the same date, copy it, and then update it with this. No, I just need a. Well, first, I guess you just have to check if it's in. So, how can I just get the time? Or convert daytime. Okay, it looks like you just do it like this. Oh, it looks like the reservation date. Let's get reservation time. And then we could say, if it's greater than the opening time and it's less than the closing time, then it would be within hours. Now let's see if that logic is actually correct. If I clicked, what happened? All right, let's go to location. Let's actually, let's print to the console in either case, just so we can see. test this and then what happens outside of hours but I didn't see the alert pop up maybe because of the render we should I mean yeah there's a difference between using render and, and not hmm but I do want to show a, mes a message Just you redirect. We're just gonna redirect to new location reservation path. 
and then we're going to be able to set the alert which would say your reservation date was outside of or your reservation time is outside of operating hours please select a new date or not a new date but <laughs> please select a new time because you Time information interesting. I wonder what's happening now. Okay, now we get the uh, alert up here. Your reservation time is outside of operating hours. Perfect. So now, what if it is? What if we move it to seven twenty-four a.m.? Now it is within operating hours. We should not see the same thing. and we still see the same thing so this logic is not working let's go inside of here and actually do pry which I'll have to add that gem and add pry rails and then for pry to work I actually can't use bin dev which means if we change any of the CSS it's not gonna update but I'm not gonna change it right now so that's fine just for testing so now we're gonna do a time that should be correct, change it, we're gonna get in the pry. What does this reservation time look like? Okay, it's not even, it didn't even do it correctly. It still has the date attached. Whereas the opening time, oh, interesting. <laughs> this actually isn't correct either. This has the whole time. So we need to somehow only get the hour and then Okay, so it looks like the thing that I was missing was using surf time. And now we can change this. So if this is uh, greater than the opening time and less than closing time, I'm just gonna have to switch this around. Change this to closing time. And now everything should work as expected. So first I'll test the bad date. That works. Now let's test the correct date. Perfect. It worked correctly. So now we just have to move on to the next validation. So we already know it's within operating hours. The next thing we need to check is, well, is this time slot available? Or is there other reservations that are within that 30 minute segment? Okay. So to do that, we can really just add another method if we want, but really what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking this logic. So we can decide, do we want to add that into a method or do we just want to do it here? I'm just going to do it here for now. So let's get into this. All right. So now we need to check if the reservation is available at that time slot. We already know it's within the operating hours, but now we need to check if it's available. So to do that, let's just search for the reservations where reservation date, they would have to be within this certain time zone. So probably about 15 minutes before, 15 minutes after. We'll just do a safe time. So we can call that safe reservation time equals. And then we're going to have to create a time range from before and after. Actually, I, <laughs> I guess I meant to do reservation 
dot reservation date. We can probably just do something like this. 15 minutes before. This is gonna get messy. But if you can see what I'm doing. Double parentheses. I created a range. Uh, maybe we can clean this up. <laughs> I don't think you can clean that up. You might just want to say. You know, oh, we can move this to like before. Adding that buffer 15 minutes before, 15 minutes after, and then we really don't even need to have that. We can just have these two, and then we can do something like this. So I feel like that's a little bit more readable. We don't need to have all those parentheses. Now that we have this, we can just say, is the count greater or equal to the location.table limit? And there we go. That's the logic. So if this count is greater than equal to, then sadly, we're going to need to tell them this time is already booked. Sorry, please select a new time. So that's the worst case. Otherwise, we would just save that reservation. And just like that, I think we have the basic logic, which would be able to validate if this reservation would work or not. So I'm just gonna go and create this first reservation, 7.30 a.m. Check it out, see what happened. Oh, validation failed, customers must exist, right. So we actually need to go up here right after we create this reservation. We'll set the customer equals current customer. Because we'll expect that the customer's already signed in at this point. Now what happens when we create it? We actually create it, but we didn't. All right, I saved it. And then we're gonna wanna redirect to, well, let's just go back to that booking path notice your reservation successfully booked. So now I'm just going to go and create another reservation. Sure. Your reservation was booked. Now we're going to want to display those reservations somewhere. So we can just simply create a controller for that, but I'm going to add a link at the top to view that page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new page for viewing your current reservations, and I'll add a link at the top. So we don't have a, we have a controller called reservations, but it's nested in locations. Uh, I'll probably just create a new controller and I'll call it active reservations controller. controller and then really just have an index for now and this would be current customer reservations we'd set a instance variable called reservations to current customer reservations and then we can go and create the view so I'm gonna do a folder Active reservations and then an index.html.erb file. We can add a header. Active reservations. And then we'll loop over those reservations. And 
and then just simply display some information. But I'll put that in the partial to clean it up. Just like that. And then we can create a new file underscore reservation.html.erb. Add a little bit of basic styling. And then inside of this, we can add something to display the information. So the reservation, reservation date. So what we'll say is maybe we'll have a message that greets them and says, your reservation is booked for this date. So we're gonna wanna do some surf time. I have a website for this. No, not this. I need the one for Ruby. I don't know. It just looks better. Surf timer. Okay. So. Yeah, maybe we'll say like January 1st at 10.30 p.m. We could really, you can you can add your own words inside. And I'm fine with that. January 1st, and let's add the date too. And then you simply just copy this. It makes it really easy. Okay. Okay, I forgot where I had that, right. <laughs> so back on this main booking page, we need to add a link to this active reservations. Go into the booking and the show page and up at the top add a link actually i wanted to say how many reservations they they have Just say view this uh, reservations and then this will link to the active reservations path. And we might do some styling here. Okay. Oh, we never set up the route to link to the active reservations controller. So that's actually really simple. We'll just go underneath booking and add resources, active reservations. And we can lock it down to only the index action. Now we'll see up at the top we have this link. Although I'm not sure. Oh, remember how I I switched to using Rails S? Let's switch back to Bindev. I was confused because the styling was messed up on this link. But it's because I was using Rails S. Oh, and actually I want to add a little bit of padding up here. We usually have padding. Let's do a div around here. Do a little bit of padding. Okay. Oh, and for my link, we can actually have a little bit of padding too. Make the text lighter. View two reservations. Also, I kind of want to have it over here. So we should be able to do oh, ML auto to add margin left. Oh, that doesn't work. That's fine. It doesn't usually work for me with links, but instead we can do flex, justify end, and that will also push it to the end. There we go. View two reservations. Oh, and now it looks like we're missing. Uh, there's a little typo there. So this was supposed to say reservation. Hey, okay. So now we see this. Uh, this page also needs a bit of. Just a little bit of styling. Um, yeah. Should be fine. And then these should also have some styling. Oops. Just add some gaps so that they're not pushed together. Okay, and now we can see your active reservations. And then it tells us when our reservation is booked for. Reservation is booked for this 
this date. Now we might want to eventually add the option to cancel this. That would be easy enough. We could just add a button here where we could go and cancel that. But I think this is fine. I just want to be able to test the logic real quick. So, so far we've been able to just create, keep creating new bookings. But at a certain point there's going to be, these bookings are going to catch up. So I'm actually just going to quickly create 10 which I don't want to do that by hand, so I'm going to do it in the console. Which, If you never use Rails console, this might be a chance to learn something. But we're going to go into the Rails console, and now I'm going to say reservation.last, and I'm actually going to dupe it. So we can just dupe it and save it. And then we can just do that. Well, we already have three at the same sort of time. So I just want to... Do it seven more times <laughs> so we get to 10. So seven times do. Reservation.last.dupe.save. Oh. Huh? Oh. <laughs> I did a do in the block. Okay. That worked. Now, it's the question about this. Will this logic work? So we have 10 overall, and they're all at the same sort of time. So let's see, will I be able to book 11? Because look, the table limit is 10. So if the logic is working, then we shouldn't be able to book another one for the same 7.30 slot. And look at that, the time is already booked. Sorry, please select a new time. Okay, so can we go, can we book one at seven because that should be out of the safe area? Yes, that works. So now, well, this one guy has a lot of reservations, but as you can see, this is a really simple way to build that seated app. And to have it working, we can book a reservation. We can check if it's available or not. And there's a lot of ways that we could go and improve this app. But I just want to try to build the MVP, get this done. And there's a lot of ways that we could improve this. So if you want to add an idea down in the comments, please add it. And then we might be able to do it with part two. I'll definitely do it if you comment something. So let me know what you want to see. For one thing, uh, for the owner, we probably want to list all the reservations. So I'll quickly do that in this video, just because I feel like that's essential. So if we go over to let's open up the app folder, let's go to the views, then the location, it would actually be the show page. So right under under where we're rendering location, let's also iterate over the location reservations. and then I will render a reservation parcel which we can create now it's just gonna have a similar styling as we've been doing going to have a similar message to the other reservation text just keeping it simple for now say you have reservation booked or no not you let's use the email because that user will have to have an email so we can say reservation dot customer email and actually we'll have to add a delegate method so let's open up the reservation model real quick and I'm going to add a method delegate email to customer. And then we're going to say prefix true. And that'll allow us to use this method customer underscore email. So customer will say that that person has booked a reservation for 
and then we'd print that date, which I'm actually just going to copy from over here. refresh we'll see all of our reservations I can kind of space them out a little bit more actually I don't want them to be too XL either uh, let's make them a little bit smaller right here we can do this add a little bit of gap and now as the owner we can see all of our reservations <laughs> see there's a lot and there's we could definitely clean that up into a better UI because the owner is going to want to check on date. But this is just simple MVP. We can list the reservations. And then over here, uh, the user, the customer has their own reservations that they can see. But yeah, this is just a very MVP of uh, restaurant reservation app. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There's definitely a lot of additions that we can do to improve this overall and to add more features. So please leave your ideas down in the comments and we can come back and do a part two where I make the UI even better. But this is a great place to start. But I hope you guys enjoyed this and you learned something new.